It was the hangout spot. I've always called it. It was kind of the clubhouse. From 78 till 87, I literally spent all day, every day there. Tony became the best skateboarder in the world at Del Mar. Those were the best contests I've ever been to. There were some heavy sessions there. It became from Proving Ground, where it was really Tony and Christian going at each other. That was when skateboarding was dead. So everybody there was a skateboarder, 100%. And you have seven years of your life at that place. There's a lot of stories. Testing, Grant Britton, Del Mar Skate Ranch. The main building is right there, it's still there. The skate park, of course, is gone. And, uh, but yeah, I spent a lot of days in this parking lot. The skate park went all the way back to the freeway. That was the edge of the skate park. I don't remember it being this big. But this is it. Let me see if there's a, I have these overviews of Del Mar. I have a ton of Del Mar photos. I lived in Cardiff and my next door neighbor was Tom Inouye. He came to my birthday party, he gave me a caster board and I was pretty stoked. And then he goes, hey, by the way, um, they're building a new skate park in Del Mar and uh, I can probably get you a job there. I went and applied for the job there and uh, the second day that they were open, I started working there. I was 10 years old. My dad and Dave Eccles' dad used to take us to Spring Valley, Vista, Oasis. We skated everywhere. My first memory is going in the pro shop, filling out the application. My dad filled it out. And then literally just walking out the back doors, went through the little turnstile, and the keyhole was right there. So my, and my first recollection was just like, jaw drop. Just completely blown away. There was uh, the Chris Stropels and Tom Minoways and all those guys skating. They were all dropping in on the keel, and we were standing in the rolling, and those guys were dicks. They wouldn't let a, you know, a kid roll in. We stood there for a while, not getting any runs, and then just proceeded to go to the, check out all the back pools. Well, the first time I went to Del Mar, I was coming from the perspective of an Oasis local, which is a totally different park in San Diego. Back then, if you weren't a local, people didn't necessarily welcome you in. You know, it was very much a local vibe. And so when you come as an outsider, it was more like, who's the stranger? You know, we skated backyard stuff. I started skating Montebello when that opened in 77. Um, then we started skating uh, Lakewood a lot. And then around that time, we'd skate whatever was close. So I skated Upland, but we never traveled that far. I've always had the same impression of Del Mar. It was one of the harder pools to skate, kind of coming from where I came from. It's funny because back in, in the late 70s, like all those parks were kind of experimental. You know, you just had somebody that didn't skate come out and, and lay concrete and do it. And Del Mar's design for the time, it was rad. It was kind of cool. Concrete wise, it had kinks, it had walls that were totally different in, in all different areas. It by no means was perfect. That keyhole was terrible. You know, it was uneven, there were hollow spots in it. You could knock on the cement and it was hollow. It was bumpy, slippery, the coping sucked. The keyhole was, it had its kinks and stuff, but it did have uh, basically flat bottom and no other pool really had that. And so that was key to setting up for tricks and being able to do good combos like that. And no other pool really had that. I don't think we realized that at the time. Anyone that came from out of town, they hated it. They couldn't figure out how to pump and then pump again. The coping was completely chewed up and the walls were all different, but we loved it. The dream of people worldwide, like we got to go ride Del Mar, that is because that's what you see in the magazine and the magazine makes everything look perfect. Del Mar being the perfect place to skate definitely wasn't, but it was the best thing that we had and we made it work perfectly. It was like surfers, you, it doesn't matter if it's shitty out, you go out every day. And it doesn't matter if it's a shitty pool, you make something of it, find a line. And that's how you roll, you know? So and that's, that's pool etiquette, man. That's when Tony started coming up, was uh, when Oasis closed. We got the overflow, you know, from them. Nobody had any place to skate, so they came up to Del Mar, and you know, we got a new influx of guys. 
I remember the first time Tony was there and somebody came into the pro shop, gotta go watch this one kid, Tony Hawk. And I watched him and he was doing tricks and they were barely coping, but he was doing, you know, like tricks. When the other parks started getting bulldozed, Del Mar got more and more important. You know, it was Del Mar and Upland and, you know, those were the last two parks. That's all there was left from, you know, the 70s. Favorite was obviously the keyhole. The keyhole was like the prime place where everybody did their stunts. That was where the events happened and where all the action happened. It was a rad pool. It was so much fun. Yeah, inverts. That was my thing. Inverts on that left wall, every kind, all day long. Learned how to stall them. Well, the main wall for tricks was the flattest wall, so it wasn't really curved so much, and it was easier to travel a bit and not hang up. You could hit it, and the coping was, was so grinded away that it didn't bonk you out, so it gave you good lift straight up. If you rebuilt that keyhole today, it would be rad. You would see people going really high. You know, it was like a vert ramp around vert ramp, but not perfect. <laughs> Far from perfect. You would sit there for hours and watch someone skate. Hours. You, know, you wouldn't even be skating. You know, you'd just be sitting there watching somebody working on something. So I worked there from 78 to 84, and I was probably the manager of the pro shop and I was pretty much the manager of the skate park. Grant was the awesome skate park manager because he shot photos of all of us and mostly let us skate for free. I think Grant got in a lot of trouble from the upper management for letting us get away with a lot of stuff. But, you know, it's skateboarding, it's pretty lawless anyway. He just had to <laughs> corral it a bit. It was the hangout spot. I've always called it. It was kind of the clubhouse, you know, where you would come there, even if you weren't skating the day, you would go and meet up in the parking lot with people. Dan was older than us, obviously, because we were just kids. And we were probably dicks, we probably deserved it, but he was kind of a jerk. Did what he had to do to keep a bunch of misfits under control, you know? It was just a weird place. It was the trailer park, then the tennis club, and then the skate park, and the miniature golf. It was the arcade, and then the driving range. It was like our place. We could go play mini golf, we could go skate, we could go in the high balls. And then we had the highball games. People slept in the highball games. The highball is, is basically a trampoline divided into quadrants, and then you have a basket behind you, and the idea is you throw these balls in the basket behind people. And once these jocks went out there and started bouncing around, and then they came in and complained that there was a turd, like, bouncing around in the highball with them. Somebody had taken a dump in there, probably a skater. <laughs> Just about everything happened there, from stealing to jumping the fence, never paying to get into the park, to getting laid the first time. I got laid the first time in the parking lot there. Skate parks are Lord of the Flies. A little handful of kids behind closed doors with no authority. I love that about it. I mean, as much as I didn't ride it or do that, I went seeing it, I was like, yes. We literally spent eight, 10, 12 hours a day there for nine years. Now, there's a bunch of dudes I've seen them grow up. Well, they're kind of grown up. All those events, the audience was every skateboarder that skated in the world at that time. Christian and Tony, you know, head to head, and people from up north were making fun of Tony and yelling and cussing. And Holmes was like style and going high and like and Birdman at every trick in the book. And finally, one day the world was out. Tomorrow is the last day it's open. Called Swank and he goes, they bulldozed Del Mar today. It was like a sinking feeling. But time won't exist again. You can't get them back. <laughs>